Welcome to the Millsurf Mike channel. This will be the first of a few videos going over the history of CZ pistols. This will cover the beginnings of CZ and the history leading up to their first two pistols producing great quantities, the Model 24 and Model 27 pistols. Although Czech lands have been under larger kingdoms such as the Holy Roman and Habsburg empires over the centuries, Czech gun designers have been prolific and made high quality firearms since the 1300s. By the mid to late 19th century, many Czech designers immigrated to places such as the United States and Austria proper. Famous designers such as Holub and the Krinkas were of Czech descent. Still, there were no major small arms factories in Czech lands by the beginning of the 20th century. Settler and below would build ammo factories in Czech lands, and artillery was produced at Skoda Works. As Steyr expanded, industries defeated would start to rise, as well as the Habsburgs would establish a government arsenal branch in Bruno. While this laid the seeds for future Czech's arm industry, it wasn't until the first end of the First World War when he saw Czech capital invested in the arms industry. The end of the war saw the dissolution of the Austro-Hungarian Empire into several Central European nations. Besides obviously Austria and Hungary, nations who would experience the same problems of the Habsburg Empire's many ethnicities and languages would arise such as Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia. The latter was the dream of half-Czech, half-Slovak man by the name of Tomas Mazarak. He went from a literary professor who fought for Czech autonomy within the Habsburg Empire to calling for total independence after the start of the First World War. He would travel the globe, drumming up support with the Entente and neutral powers. One of those trips would be to Russia after the revolution to help form the famed Czech Legion of former POWs. In 1915, Czech and Slovak communities around the world would start talking about forming a federation. Mazarak definitely supported this. By 1918, he would gain U.S. backing for the new state, and in June of that year, the Allies would recognize the borders proposed by Mazarak. On October 28, 1918, Czechoslovakia would officially break off from the crumbling Austro-Hungarian Empire. Mazarak would return to Prague as a hero. As I mentioned earlier, though, Czechoslovakia would have some of the same problems and parallels as the Habsburg Empire. This would be exacerbated by the First Constitutional Assembly in 1920, only inviting Czechs, who were barely a majority in the country, and Slovaks, who only made up one-sixth. Germans, who were nearly a quarter of the population, were ignored. Even the Slovaks would get pushed to the side, as promises of autonomy under a federal system would soon wane. Still, Mazarak would work to protect individual freedoms, and this helped to keep things stable while the country experienced prosperity. It was during this prosperity that Czech's firearm industry would arise. The birth of the new nation saw the need to suddenly arm its own military. While there were some factories producing components for Steyr, there was no large-scale large small arms producer at the end of the war. First, they would look to fill supply holes and structures. Next, they would go through a rationalization process to arm the military, definitive models, and create an export market. Finally, you would see a period of acceleration and modernization in the 30s as they looked to respond to the German threat and take advantage of the worldwide armament boom. Czech capital was poured into the arms industry, and three main companies would emerge. Srovica Praga, located in Prague, Srovica Bruno, located in Bruno, and Česka Srovica, which involved from the small Czech arms factory located in Strakonitz. It would be the latter company who would become CZ. Some smaller companies, such as Lovina, Kohot and & Company, and Frontishek Dusik, would pop up to help fill the civilian market. Although they really didn't have a, an effect in military arms numbers, they did provide a quality competition which pushed the quality of the military arms makers even higher. Since this video and subsequent Trek videos will concentrate on the pistols, we need to narrow the focus to that. The first pistol adopted by the state was the Model 1919 Praga pistol, 7.65 mm or 32 ACP, developed by Vaclav Holik, who would later go on to design and perfect many of the Czech machine guns when he moved to Bruno. This was a simple browning, browning blowback design. Not many of these would be produced, as Srovica Praga would eventually close in 1926, many of his designers finding themselves at Sesko-Lovinska Srovica in Bruno to help with import considerations. It is here in 1918 where the Czech military of national defense negotiated with Mauser to buy their equipment and expertise to tool their factory. Austrians and Germans would help spool up this factory and train the Czech workers. This would be headed by Joseph Nickel, 
who designed and developed the Mauser 1910 and 1914 pistols. He would also try to make a pistol with basically a rotating barrel from the Steyr Hahn upper, made it with a 1914 frame that could handle bigger calibers toward the start of the war, but this never took off. While Bruno was mainly supposed to concentrate on infantry rifles, Nichols saw that the Czechs needed to adopt a domestic sidearm and offered a design by himself and Franciszek Maiska. The externals of his pistol were inspired and nearly identical to his 1914 pistol, with the rotating barrel mechanism taking a page from the Steyr Hahn. This would be chambered in the 9mm Browning, or better known as 380 ACP. This would be designated as the VZ-22. Several changes were requested after testing, including a stronger barrel and slide, an external extractor, the changes were made to the hammer, firing pin, and sights. It was also requested that the magazine close when removed. Bruno had difficulty making identical parts, and many of the guns had to be tuned individually. Because of this, it is hard to interchange parts in the VZ-22. More changes would be requested, but by this time, Bruno had produced 19,000 pistols and tired of the back and forth with the MOD and nickel. After completing this contract, they said they only had the capacity to produce rifles, and the government agreed. Newly formed Cheska Sprobica and Strakonitz would be asked to asked for a quote on 20,000 more pistols. Just a cleanup note, Cheska Srovica would trademark CZ, so Cheska Slovenska Srovica would become Srovica Bruno and would use the trademark Z or ZB. CZ demanded a high price and wanted exclusive rights to produce the pistol. After negotiations with Mauser and ZB over licensing, engineers would work to simplify the design and one, be able to use CZ's tooling, two, make it more cost-effective and increase speed of production, and three, make it reliable enough to meet the demands of the MOD. Many of the parts would be stamped instead of milled, the trigger design would be simplified, a disconnector and magazine safety would be added, the slide and barrel would be slightly elongated, and the barrel lugs would be made symmetrical or reversible. All right, let's take a look inside the CZ24, take a little closer look to, at it. Now, I have my Styrhan 1912 out here, field strip as well as a Mauser 1914 pistol. Uh, the reason I have that is the CZ-22, the precursor to the 24, is basically Joseph Nickel and uh, Franciszek Maiska uh, combining uh, basically the looks a stronger version of the uh, 1914 frame with the uh, locking rotating barrel of the Steyr Hahn pistol. So um, of course, the 1914 itself is striker fired, and it's a much different animal than these hammer fired ones. But I just have it out here for comparison sake. Um, the CZ22 was made by uh, Cheska Slavinska Zrobica. Um, they would later trademark ZB because Cheska Zrobica would trademark CZ. Uh, the initial one, uh, Cheska Slavinska. They were in Bruno, and CZ was in uh, Stracanus. So the initial ones were made in Bruno, uh, but there was problems with the parts. Uh, you know, just very hard to interchange the parts. They had a hard time standardizing the parts, and you know, there were other complaints about the pistol. So uh, basically, is more or less Maiska would uh, he would correct the pistol. Uh, CZ would get the contract, and basically we'd have, this is what comes out the CZ-24. Now let's take a little closer look at this. Um, now you look at that button, you may think that it is a magazine release, but if you're a modern pistol shooter, but actually I think it just releases the safety. But your pistol actually locks open on, it locks open on empty. So you can see that it's empty there. But, you know, since that is in the magazine release, and one this was actually requested was the slide drops when you release your magazine, but you need your hammer open to uh, field strip this. So to do that, you have this over here. You basically just push that in, pull that down, and it should come right out. And... I should have held the slide, but I didn't. But you can see how it came forward. Uh, you got the, you know, to help rotate the barrel, you got that little mechanism over your uh, spring and guide rod. Pull that out. 
And then your barrel, oh, you got a little bushing up here. You got to give it a little quarter turn and pull that out also. And, you know, it's something you got to remember when you're putting it back together. But you can see the inside there. Uh, you got to rotate it a little bit so you can pull it out. And this is field strip. Now you can kind of see the, you can see some of the similarities between the uh, Steyr Hahn and the 24 and of course the rotating barrel the rotating barrel mechanism so uh, let's go ahead and put this back together um, you see there's a couple little notches there on each side so you just aim that aim your barrel in there get it in there and you gotta give her a little twist for it to be in there properly um, don't forget about your bushing. So quarter turn, put that on there. You got to put your rotating mechanism over the spring and guide rod, and then of course mate mate that up to your mate mate that up to on your barrel there. But do it on the correct way. Your the uh, plunger end goes towards the back of the pistol. So you made your spring up there. And then you got to kind of watch when you put it back together. Because notice the little indentation there. That's what you got to get over your, get over the hole there to. So put that in there. You got to make that up. But sometimes you got to push your barrel back a little bit. But. Get her in there. See how that goes. Function check. And you're back together. So let's get back to a little more history on the 24 and start talking about the 27 a little bit. The first 200 pistols would be delivered on May of 1925 and would be designated the VZ-24. The first 20,000 would be delivered by 1926 and 100,000 more by 1931. Production would continue through 1939, and in all, 196,000 of these pistols would be produced. Most would be made for government contracts, and very few would be exported. A number of these would end up in Poland. Remember from my VIS-35 video that the Polish Armaments Department actually approved a payment to CZ to have them produce the pistol for them until the Dovkant and Vilny Idrzec got a hold of the agreement and convinced the Polish government they could help develop a homemade, superior pistol, which would be the VIS-35. As with many of the pistols produced in the occupied lands, the CZ-24 would also find itself produced under Nazi occupation, and many would receive Waffenops. While the Model 24 would be good for military use, police forces requested a lighter pistol. Franciszek Maiska would simplify the Model 24 into a simple blowback pistol, that fired the 7.65 mm or 32 ACP round. This became the VZ-27. This pistol would not only arm the police, but would find a niche on the export market being produced through the occupation, liberation, and until the early 1950s. These would cost roughly half as much as the VZ-24 to produce. 620,000 to 650,000 these pistols would be produced in various CZ factories. Alright, let's take a little closer look at the CZ-27. I have the CZ-24 here field strip, just for comparison's sake. We went over that a little earlier in the video. Um, the CZ-24 was adopted for the military. It was in 3.8 ACP. The, for police use, they wanted uh, something with a 32 ACP. And this, since it's a little less powerful round, this is actually direct blowback. So these actually cost about half as much to make as these did. So, uh, let's make a... Let's strip this down and take a look at the uh, differences. Now again she locks open on empty and you can see that she's unloaded. Um, again that is in a magazine release that's a safety release so when we release our magazine uh, it lock it slide goes closed as was requested on the earlier CZ pistols. Um, hold that back again you got, you got to push that in back there so I'm holding my slide back a little bit, pushing that down. That should come right out. And although it looks similar to when it comes out, 
as you will be able to see, let's let's pull when we pull our uh, mechanism off our spring out, you can see instead of the rotating bolt, you got just the uh, you just got the interlocking in there to keep the uh, barrel steady. So we have our bushing again, quarter turn, pull that out, and see if you can see where it mates up there. Twist that all the way around and pull the barrel out because you can see there up there. So again, we're field stripped. Um, like I said, you can see the uh, differences here between the rotating barrel and the locked barrel with the grooves. So let's put her back together. Um, like I said, we got that up there. So put that in there. Remember, when you get to there, you twist it. Push that back. Let's go ahead and put our bushing back on. Quarter turn. And we put our spring and our locking mechanism on where it, you know it mates with the grooves there. And like with the 24, you have that groove there. You get to meet up to get it in the hole there. So we put that back in, push that up. Function check. And we are back together. So if you learned some, something so far, uh, please give me a like. Uh, otherwise, please just stay on and we'll finish this video up. My VZ-24 was made in 1937, and my VZ-27 was made sometime during the war, as indicated by the F and H marking. I shot these along with the next pistol in the series, the VZ-38, on the same day. The VZ-27 was definitely more reliable than the 24, although I might chalk it up to the ammo that I used. Since I knew I was shooting a bunch of 380, I picked up a bunch of cheap, remanufactured full metal jacket ammo, and I had problems with both the 24 and the 38. Still, I bet my 24 could use a set of wolf springs. The 27 worked beautifully and proved to be an accurate, at least for me, pistol. They both felt decent ergonomically in the hand. In comparison with the contemporaries, or would I take it to war question, the answer is definitely a no on both. They both have a heel release, which is a hard no for me. The calibers on both would also rule them out. I believe I said no to the Beretta 1934, a better pistol in my humble opinion for this reason. The 32 ACP of the 27 would definitely rule it out. What have I missed? What else would you like to learn about? To learn about another VZ-24, be sure to click over here. Please join the GOA and get $5 off your membership with the link in the description. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a great day.